Hey everybody, welcome to SketchUp Live episode number 10. My name is Josh, that's Aaron over there. Hey guys. And today we're talking about some of the new things you'll find in SketchUp Pro 2018, which we released earlier this week. That's right, 20, uh, 2018 includes a bunch of changes to both SketchUp Pro and Layout that we'll be taking a look at uh, right now. Yeah, Aaron gonna... will be doing some uh, SketchUp driving, I'll show some Layout stuff, and we'll toss it back and forth and uh, see what happens. All right, so we're gonna jump first into SketchUp Pro. First thing I wanna look at in SketchUp Pro is Stacy. So everybody say, hello, Stacy. Come on. Hello, hey, Stacy. Thank you very much. Uh, Stacy is a member of our QA team, and she is the face of SketchUp 2018. She's our new default component, face me component in the default template. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at some of the new and updated tools in SketchUp 2018. First thing, this is for Mac users. Uh, you may or may not notice how nice this model looks. In 2018, Mac got anti-aliasing. So here in our OpenGL settings under SketchUp Preferences, I actually have the ability to choose what multi-sample rate I want for anti-aliasing. Zero, which is going to give me more jagged lines, all the way up to eight, which is going to give me very smooth lines. So something to play with if you're on Mac and you want these nice uh, smooth looking lines on your model is uh, check out anti-aliasing there in OpenGL settings. All right, and now for things that everybody gets. Uh, first thing to look at is attributes. Uh, if I look in this model, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this door. This door is a component. When I choose a component, over here in the entity info, under this drop-down box, I get these things called advanced attributes. Um, this is a set of hard-coded attributes that are applied to every component inside of SketchUp. So anytime I make a component, it automatically gets a price, size, URL, owner, and status. I don't have to fill these, these values in, but if I fill them in, they'll be available for things like reporting values, um, I can also take them into layout and call out these uh, components by those values. They'll also end up in my IFC export. So when I actually export this file as an IFC, I'll get uh, some SketchUp tags that'll include the names and values for these, these uh, advanced attributes. So if I look here at this door, just to talk about what's here, um, I did for this door put in a, a price, I put a size in there, a URL, owner, uh, and a status, in addition to the existing flag of the IFC type. So I did, this is in here before, but I do have it tagged as an IFC door. Uh, one of the things we did uh, get updated to is our IFC export. Our IFC export's more complete, including the information, like I said, these SketchUp defined attributes that will go out in the IFC data as well. Uh, something else just to notice, because uh, because it wasn't there before, 2018 has these little toggle buttons allowing me to turn visibility on and off, lock, unlock, cast or receive shadows just by clicking on these icons when an item is selected. That's not just for components, that's for anything that is highlighted uh, in 2018. All right, so that data is great. Um, one of the things we can do with it, like I said, is generate reports. I'm gonna take a look at that real quick because there's some cool stuff in generate report that's new. When I click on generate report, it's gonna come up, this, this will look very similar. I'm gonna go ahead and just create a brand new template. When I come in to generate report, the first thing I see here is selection. Do I wanna report upon the entire model or just what's selected? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull data from the entire model. Down here, I have the option choosing nesting levels. Um, this is something that was there before I just wanna to touch on, not a lot of people know about this. Um, if I choose all, it's gonna pull all my components in the entire model and report upon them. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a value for my nesting level. Now to explain what nesting level is, I'm gonna hop over here to Outliner and take a look at this. Outliner is a uh, hierarchical list, so this top level is my model. So right here, this is level one, that's my model. Level two, I have some, some items here, barbecue, bench, chair, um, and then level three is anything nested below level two. So if I look inside my buildings here, this is where my doors and windows are. This is what I want to actually report upon is this data right here. Now this model is obviously set up to make this specific example, but if you're careful when you're modeling, you can actually set up your model so that it can be reported upon based on nesting level. So since that's level one, level two, level three, if I put level three here into my nesting value, I'll only be reporting upon these doors and windows. 
Now if I come over here and look at the data I want to include, I want to put the uh, entity name. I'm going to put a price and a quantity and I'll grab a size. So if I run that report right now, this should look familiar. This is what it would have looked like in 2017. Here's a list of all the information you wanted, one item per line. One of the nice things about 2018, whoops, hit the wrong button there. Um, this is why live broadcasts are fun. They keep you on your toes. It's just, it's a good time for everybody. Um, one of the nice things that 2018 added was the ability to group by. So if I put entity name up here, what's going to end up happening is it's going to consolidate all the items with the same entity name and group them together into a single line. So if I put things like my price, uh, my quantity, and what did I have over there, size, back in there, but with entity name up at the top and hit run report, see I get fewer items listed here, one of each, D1, 2, and W1 through 6, a total price for all of those items, and then the quantity that, that exists there. So I can take this report now, I can save it, I can download it, export it as a C CVS file, CSV file, yeah, don't take this to the drugstore, it's nothing to do with that. Um, <laughs> and I can actually use that in layout uh, to create something like a part list, which is something that uh, Josh may be taking a look at right now, perhaps. Let's do it. Let's jump into layout now. Let me adjust a few things here. All right, so we are in layout, and I'm going to cruise over to the next page here. And as you saw, Aaron uh, deal with some new attributes there. Uh, in layout, I can grab the uh, label tool here. I can uh, start labeling a component that might have some of those attributes. And you can see here, it's going to pull that information right with that uh, tool in layout. Uh, if I try something else here and look at that drop down, let's uh, click on this window here. And let's try that again. This drop down will show the available attributes. So those are the ones that you saw. Aaron on, on his side there, and I can choose, let's say, the price if I want, and it'll remember that last choice. So if I want to be quick about it, I can jump around and just click away, and it'll remember that last choice. So those are all available there. Uh, also, as you saw with uh, the report that Aaron generated, I can bring that into layout here and go to File Insert and look for that CSV file right there. Is that like a CVS file or a little different? Uh, it's a little different. Okay, cool. Uh, there it is, report.csv, and I can bring that into SketchUp here. I'm going to do a quick scale here. If I hold down Shift and scale this up and then just let go, I can type in a scale factor. I type in 3 there, so it's proportionally scaled uh, 3 times bigger. And if I have some other uh, maybe styled tables in my, my layout document, I can pretty quickly match the properties between the one that's already there and the new one that I just brought in. So if I grab this tool here, uh, this match properties tool or the style tool in layout, I can click on a, a table like this and apply those properties pretty quickly to the one that I just imported. So uh, this might be something that you use scrapbooks for. You could bring in um, a styled table that has everything like you want, fonts, colors, that kind of thing, line weights, and then just match the properties of that with a, a new report that you brought in. Um, so you don't have to do that every time. It's pretty quick. Very cool. And Time saver. And of course, you know, Layout's got a lot of great abilities to style things like this, so you can just go into your shape style panel here or your, your fonts here and uh, make some pretty, pretty good adjustments there. All right, let's cruise over to the next page, Scaled Vector Drawing. So this is a pretty cool new feature in SketchUp. It's actually an entirely new panel. So it's Scaled Drawing here. You can see this panel there, Scaled Drawing. It's in Window, Scaled Drawing right there. And it's pretty simple. I can just click on that uh, Make Scale Drawing button, and uh, Layout will tell me to choose a scale first. So let's say I know that uh, I'm working with some drawings here that are uh, set to a, a specific scale. In this case, uh, half inch equals a foot. So I can go over here, and maybe I match that scale. Half inch equals a foot. So now when I start drawing, it's going to be inside a scaled group. So I'm going to zoom in here while I do this. And you can see that things are kind of grayed out back there because uh, it's now kicked me into a, a special group that's a scaled group. So when I go to the line tool now and I start drawing, you can see here if I type in, let's say, one foot, maybe a, a window that's one foot by one foot, you can see it's drawing at scale now. And I'm just using real-world 
uh, dimensions there. So this might be something that you use to draw on top of a sketch of a viewport, or perhaps a DWG that you've imported into layout, or just totally on to the side of the drawing if you want to start drawing a, an entirely new um, detail, perhaps, with, uh, that's to a scale. So if I move this off to the side, and I go back over to the scale here and go to maybe a quarter of an inch equals a foot, and then double click to get inside that scaled group, and I start drawing again, um, I'm typing those real world dimensions. You can see here, I'm still typing that one foot by one foot dimension, but it's inside the scaled group, so it's respecting that scale. <coughs> so uh, I can click outside that group to uh, kind of exit the group there, just like uh, any other groupings you have in your layout document. Uh, let's cruise over to this side here, and I'll draw a couple shapes, and we'll talk about how to group things like that. So if I've got two shapes here, and I select them, and then right click, I can make a group. So this behaves just like SketchUp. Uh, I've got a group here that I can double click to get inside. There I'm in, inside that group, or click outside to get outside the group. Uh, if I do that, you'll notice that just like in SketchUp, if I go to uh, group edit here, hide rest of document. So similar to SketchUp, I can hide the rest of the model or hide the rest of the document, which is pretty useful if you're just focusing on one part of your drawing. I have that tied to a shortcut just like I might have in SketchUp, so I can just quickly toggle that on or off. So that's also just like SketchUp, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can also lock these type of things. If I right click, I can lock that group, uh, similar to how you might lock a viewport in, in your layout document here. I've got a, a SketchUp viewport that perhaps is kind of set uh, exactly how I want. I don't want to double click on this on accident, so I can also lock a viewport like that. Right click, unlock, or right click to lock it. And then you can affect any of those locked entities until you choose to unlock them. So that is also just like SketchUp. Looks like we got more and more features in layout making it more SketchUp-y. Yeah, so that's good. And that's, in the future, we'll good. be that's doing great. that more and more. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's hop back into SketchUp and look at a couple more features over here. All right. Um, one of the big things that we got going on is uh, some changes to our section cuts. So we're going to look at a couple different things. I'm going to go ahead and click on the sketch, sketch, sketching, se section cut button. That was a lot more work than it should have been. Section cut, and it's going to, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to prompt me. It's going to say, what is the name of the section cut and what is the symbol? So I'm going to do one here that I'm going to cut horizontally across the whole building, and that's going to cre be created for my floor plan. So I'm going to call it floor plan. That's a good name. And for the symbol, I'm going to get creative and call it one. Uh, if I don't like being prompted and I want to just use whatever the default is, I can turn that on. But I like that control, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked and hit place. Now it's going to give me, just like it did before, here's my section plane. I'm going to click it on a horizontal surface, and I'm going to use the move command to slide it down and cut into my building. One of the things you'll notice right here on the corners, it actually says one. That's the label that I picked. So if I had picked A or something like that, it would show A instead of one. Also, um, so it's it not be viewable in layout too. If you have some complex sections going on, you might compose a view that intentionally includes that little label so you can see what's going on. Right. Something else it's going to show is over here in the outliner, I'm actually going to get that section right here. So you see I have it called floor plan, and that's actually going to show up alphanumerically in this list. So outliner is much more organized than it was in 2017. It's a lot easier to find things on here, and sections actually show up in that list. Um, just for fun, I'm going to go in here and add one more. So I'm going to make this one is going to be my section, so I'm going to call it section. And uh, I'm going to call it symbol of two, and I'm just going to put it on the side here and move it over. This is going to give Josh a little something to play with when he hops into uh, layout with this model. So there I have two different sections. and. As before, I can toggle these visibilities through view or right click, but I can also come over to my outliner and right click and activate cuts there. So if I want to jump to one or to two, I can actually do all of that through the outliner. If you don't use outliner right now, outliner is an awesome tool to use. Uh, it's a way to bring all of your UI and actually interacting with entities right inside of one spot, which is the outliner window, and makes it a lot quicker and easy to get access to those items. Um, something else we can change. You may or may not have picked up on this, but my sections are filled in. So this is a new thing in 2018. We actually have the option of filling sections. This is controlled 
by the styles. So if I look at styles over here, I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to choose this fifth icon, which is the edit. Um, and in here, some of my options include my section fill color, section fill line color, and my section line width. So all these values can be changed. So if I don't like this pink color, if I want to go to more of a yellow color, I could pick that and uh, choose it as part of my style. I can also turn this on and off. So I can actually toggle uh, my section fills. I can turn my section cuts or planes on or off as part of the style as well. So if I wanted to save that, so just flipping to the style, hid my planes like that, I could turn that off. Um, a great way to control what's there, and of course that information is also going to show up when I bring this model over into layout. You may be uh, about to do this, but if not, can you toss one of those section planes inside maybe that left building group? Yeah, absolutely. To show what happens there if it's nested inside a component? You bet I can. So if I come into a component, um, I can actually cut a section on this component specifically by adding another section plane. and. Uh, I'm going to call this a letter just to be, you know, because I can. I'm going to call it A. Try and stop me. And I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to move it right inside. So what that does is that's only going to cut the materials or the items that are inside that component. So in this case, it was just this building. See, the floor did not get cut. But what's happening there is because I have it happening inside and outside of that component, I end up with basically multiple cuts on geometry. So you don't have to live with just one cut all the time. You can actually stack them up by using uh, embedded sections inside of groups or components. What happens if you use the rotate tool on one of those section planes? All oh, stuff gets crazy. So I'm going to take this one right here, and I'm going to use rotate. And uh, let's just find out. Whoa, fun house. So awesome things happen. Yeah, so I know a lot of times we end up using section planes very straight across architecturally, just uh, putting them in one spot, but you can get some cuts and some information out of, uh, or some views out of models that you wouldn't normally think of using those standard move commands with the section planes. Cool. Um, so a couple other things that happened inside of 2018. We did uh, integrate the STL exporter. Anybody who uses this for 3D printing uses the XTL STL exporter extension right now, but you don't have to do that anymore. You can just go to export 3D model, and one of the options for exporting is an STL file. So you can natively export STL files from SketchUp 2018 Pro. And uh, something else that's, that's here, and this is something that won't have an immediate impact, but uh, there's been a change to the way that preferences are handled. So as we move forward with additional versions, when we go to the next version, uh, things like preferences in layout and SketchUp will automatically be brought over to new versions. So that'll be something to, to look forward to. Um, so that's it for the uh, 2018 things. I'm gonna, Josh is going to hop back in the layout. If you guys have specific questions or uh, things you'd like to know more about, go ahead and send them in on Facebook, and we'll try to address them as they come in. Yeah, and uh, we didn't mention this yet, but we've got a a couple blog posts. If you go to our SketchUp blog, uh, you can read some articles there about the new features and a few videos too. So there's a section plane video. Uh, you did one on very well made videos. If I do, oh, yeah. the yeah. guys who did it did a great job. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, <laughs> go to the blog and read some of that stuff. It's a more comprehensive uh, description of some of the new features because some of the stuff we're showing here today, we don't have time to go through everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, speaking of that, can you flip me over there? Yep. Uh, drawing tool improvements in layout. There's so many, I can't show them all here, so uh, the best way to check these out is to jump into that yourself and just kind of play around and, and see what's going on there. Uh, the reason for all these improvements, as you may have guessed, is because we added scale drawing to layout. Uh, we wanted to make the ability to draw much easier, so there's a lot of tweaks that are you know, very small, subtle, kind of like inferencing in SketchUp, it's just kind of there. It works um, as you draw, things that hopefully work as you expect. So you might jump into layout now and try these, and you don't even realize that they weren't there before. So uh, let's take a look at some of these here. Uh, if I jump into the arc tool here, you can see I can pretty quickly draw a tangent arc there. Uh, as you draw off curves like this, it's just a much more intuitive way of drawing here. Looks Things. similar to SketchUp again. Yeah. Works more like SketchUp, and if I draw, uh, you know, a few lines like this and double click into this. You can see here that if I stack these nodes on top of each other, that's one way that I can delete a node and, 
and join those together. I can also use just the delete key and remove the nodes like that. Or if I click on a line segment, things move together how you might expect. So hopefully as you draw and lay out now, perhaps, you know, outside of a SketchUp viewport, just creating your own line work in layout, uh, this stuff helps you draw a little bit easier. Um, like I said, there's a lot of improvements. There's, there's over 30 improvements to the drawing tool, so please cruise in there and check them out yourself. Uh, oh, yeah, one other cool thing here. If I go to the line tool, and before I start drawing here, if I right click, I can uncheck or check auto join lines. So if I do that and draw a line there, draw a line here, you can see that these two lines are joined. But if I right click and uncheck auto join lines, as I start drawing these two separate lines, these two lines now will be uh, separate entities. So even though they snap to the same point, they didn't connect. Yeah. So it's not automatically going to join those lines like it used to. So nice. I think that's pretty useful for creating more architectural drawings. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So the next page here, a big one is DWG import. Uh, of course, consultants, colleagues, friends who have DWG files, if they toss them over to you, um, you can now bring those into layout. And uh, it's just a much better representation of that DDBG than it might be inside of SketchUp. So, so this is also, I mean, you could get, if you have pre-made details, uh, yeah. schedules, title blocks, anything like that saved as a DWG file, you just pull it right in. Yeah, title blocks is a great one. If, you, if you're in a company and you're switching over to SketchUp and Layout, you might have an AutoCAD title block that is styled the way you want. You can bring that into Layout, maybe make it even better in Layout, because in Layout you have some cool ways of making it look better. So even you can keep that, keep that standard or maybe adjust it inside of Layout. Cool. Uh, also, it opens up Layout to the world of free DBG libraries, so you can import that stuff in. Uh, but let's start with uh, uh, just a simple elevation of the model that you saw on Aaron's side there. If I go to File, Insert, I'm going to look for that DBG file. Here I've got a couple elevations and a plan, uh, front elevation DBG there. I can open that up. And I'll be prompted to make a choice here before I actually import it. I'm going to choose model space. So those of you who aren't familiar with this, model space versus paper space is a pretty standard nomenclature in CAD. Model space is the one-to-one -one space where you actually draw the drawing, whereas paper space is usually a scaled version for output. So model space you can think of as being your real full-size model. Paper space is what you're going to hit and send to the printer. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can see here I've got this DWG file brought into SketchUp. I can change the scale and scoot that around. It's a, a scaled group like we talked about before, so I can double click and get inside that special scaled group. Uh, I've got a couple other DWG files that I imported here. Let's jump down into this one here and show you that when you uh, import the DWG file, you might have some layers that were created in the other program. So uh, layout's going to group those by layer. So, for example, if I wanted to change the line weight hierarchy here, perhaps I jump into this group here and select the trees. They were on a separate layer, so they're a separate group in layout. And if I go into the shape style uh, panel here, I can go to stroke weight, and let's make these pretty light. The trees don't need to be so bold. I could jump into the, the house or the structures here. Those are all grouped together because they were on the same layer. And let's make that a bolder line weight. So things like that are pretty easy once you have that information inside of layout. And the DWG exporter is also improved. DWGs in or out, just good stuff. Yeah. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show with the layout stuff. All right. Um, yeah, I guess if you have any more questions, now is the time to ask them. Um, like I said, like Josh pointed out, we do have some content available through our website, through our YouTube channel. Um, here we're linking to it on Facebook. If you do have specific questions, though, shoot them in now. Um, we have a couple. These, those, those look like uh, things you may want to. All right, what do we got here? Up on. Can you set line width uh, when drawing? Yeah, so that was the shape style panel here. So as I'm drawing these lines, if I just draw two lines there, zoom in on those. You can see stuff activate here when I click on those lines. So I can uh, uncheck. Uh, these, these are three buttons here that I can um, activate or, or deactivate things. The stroke weight here is right there. Makes it a bolder line. If I, if I adjust these things before I start drawing, that's going to be the attributes carried over. So if I make a change to the stroke weight now and then go to the line tool, 
that's going to be the default setting for the for the lines there. So yeah, pretty easy. That's in the shape style panel, so window shape style. <clears throat> All right. And other questions there? No. We're we're so good that we covered everybody's questions without them being asked. Wow, nice job. We're on top of it. That's what that's what doing ten of these gets you. Yeah. Uh, if you can go to uh, my screen there, Matt, let's take a look at uh, the blog. So it's blog.sketchup.com. And I think we've got five articles there referring to stuff uh, that we just talked about uh, this week with the release. So some very specific stuff based on the new features and maybe just some general thoughts on SketchUp 2018. Right. Well, I guess that about does it for... Uh this What's New in 2018 SketchUp Pro. Um, I guess just thanks for coming by, and I hope you guys enjoy SketchUp. And uh, as always, now or later, let us know what you think, and uh, we love hearing feedback. So Yeah. Aaron's going to stay golden. Darn right. All right. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>